well if it's not the Pook Maxi build going down today. We've got some big things coming for this bike today, and if you've been following along with the build, you know we've been going ham on this thing. The motor, the bike itself, every little piece of this puzzle, and it's turning out absolutely amazing. We did a lot of things in the last couple videos. Some new upgrade suspension, new wheels, tires, headset, bar, everything you see here. We do got more pieces over here. We actually got more pieces up here as well. Very excited to be working on the rear disc brake setup to this thing, as well as our upgraded swing arm to go along with it. This is gonna be big for a lot of things, especially wheelies when we have all that weight on the back, you don't feel any play. It's actually kind of dangerous to have this one. You could probably bend it and the wheel would probably jam. Very sketchy if you actually think about it. I know there's some things we might have to modify on this to make it work with the disc brake setup. Bad boys out the way. This is something big. This is the rear disc setup that we've been waiting for. But obviously, caliper line and brake handle, reservoir itself, whole setup. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like it's got a parking brake or something. We'll probably end up just taking that off. If... What is going on here, boys? Look at this thing. Big old brake rotor drilled. Got some bolts in there to bolt to our actual wheel itself. Went with a 38 tooth sprocket, kind of upgeared a, a little bit because I know with the build, it's obviously gonna run out of gearing faster. So the only option I had was pretty much either a 44, 46, or 38. So I didn't want to go any bigger in the rear. So I went with the 38, which also in resulting to make it not too high of a gearing where the bike has no power in the bottom end, I had to lower the gearing in the front, which is stock of 17, we want the 15. We're gonna be throwing this thing on today and I'm very excited. Dude, this thing is just absolutely massive. We just pulled the axle out and uh, we're gonna figure out where I have to mount this bad boy. See where it kind of lines up on the swing arm and then we'll take it all back apart and actually drill it out on the swing arm. But for now, we're just gonna throw it on the bike to get an idea of what's going on here. All right, boys, here we have a uh, rolling swing arm. We got it all set in there. I'm kind of getting the idea that back here. Yeah, you definitely have to drill a hole back here. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this into the frame now. It's gonna be kind of hard to wrestle this thing in, so it should be pretty fun. But uh, it'll be easy for you guys, cause. All right, we got her set in there. We kind of just got it like cross bolted, just the two bolts in. We got everything kind of sitting in there to get an idea. Here, as you see, we got some parts stacked up again. And uh, it's time to pop these things open and see what we got. One of these, which I run on a lot of my scooters, 12 mil axle. I usually run the 10 mil on the scooters. They're long, two, they look cool. But three, you can kind of see this weird tip at the top it has a hole that you can run a cotter pin in. So just a little extra safety. You know, if your bolts come loose on the front wheel, at least you know your wheel's not gonna fly off. A spigot, you could say, for the front, for the actual intake to run a smaller carb because of the intake we went with, which you, you will also see in one of these boxes down here. So also went ahead and grabbed an inline fuel filter. So we got a, I believe this is the right filter. This is for a scooter as well. I run this one pretty much all my builds, but this should work with the CP carb, not sure on the length, but we'll make it work. So we got ourselves a fancy little scooter swap to have S23 quick throttle. What a quick throttle is, it basically is able to leverage the throttle in a way where you have to spin the throttle less. Now this one has like four adjustments on it. Um, I also run these on almost all my scooters as well, and uh, I'm a big fan of these. But we'll find out. Good old Honda Bond, you always need Honda Bond. Box number three, for no reason, just wanted this headlight. I thought it looked cool, we're about to find out. Headlight for the poop. Little CM7 uh, head bolts. These are the extended ones. MLM intake for the Pelini cylinder. So it has the right bolt pattern for the single reed Pelini cylinder. As you see, this is more for like the Makuni carbs, I believe it is, that has these weird bolt-on carburetors for this type of flange. I'm thinking that with that spigot, this thing will convert it to be able to run a CP carb on it. Uh, went and got a new chain because we know why not we're already this far into this thing Why wouldn't you want to throw a new chain on so new chain and of course the studs that we needed M7 Melosi studs better axle better looks Better pizza currently making some spacers for the front wheel right now uh, Just got this little piece of aluminum 12 mil cut it down to the right size Get a little deburring tool in here to clean it up around the edges a little bit So I would cut one spacer, but that's all I had in the aluminum but luckily two fit perfect now I can tighten this down and we got it perfectly centered with the exact right amount of spacers right down the center. You see that. Now for Strictly, just for my pure enjoyment because I really want to see what it looks like, I'm going to throw this headlight on. Not even going to wire it in. We're not even getting that far yet. Stock headlight had threads in it. This one does not. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out and I'm actually gonna go put an M6 rave nut in it. That way I can just thread an M6 bolt right into it. Take our rave nut tool, got her all in there, and uh, should be able just to hit it with a good old one two action. Rave nut, perfect. All right, these packages keep showing up. Oh yeah, we got a new seat for the poop. Some important stuff in this one, boys. Okay, we got our uh, kickstart clutch plate. So I think you already know what we got in here, boys, is a good old jammer clutch. And as you see, this will be the plate that we adapt when we go kickstart. So we won't need this clutch plate, which is like the one that you would use if you're using the clutch lever to drop it to start the bike. So I didn't really need a whole new seat, but I wanted one and this was Cobra skin. So I was like, why not? This one I liked because it had the Pook logo on the back, but the thing about these seats is they're metal. They're actually metal on the seat pan, so you can't staple the seat covering. You have to use like a glue, and this one was just like cut up. It's ripped all around, and it was just a pain to try to like re-glue it down. <laughs> Angle of this one's a lot better too. That's it with it slammed down. I'm not sure how we're going to be running it, but it still looks like... We might have to make a bracket or of some sort to actually, you know, bolt it into the actual fender itself, so. All right, back wheels back off because we're cutting the fender up. I also finished mounting in the swing arm. I also went ahead and drilled the bracket that we needed for the rear caliper mount. So I had to drill into the swing arm. I'll show you more of that in a second, but I got it lined up where I think I want to cut it at, and we're going to go with the first cut. Worst that happens, we'll cut it again. Kind of want to play it safe spot, so. Fender's chopped, buttery smooth back here. Took a little grinder wheel on the Dremel to smooth her all out. Damn near a perfect cut back there, boys. So we're looking good. All right, so everything's hooked up in there. I got the little slot drilled, or the hole drilled, holding this rear caliper bracket. Um, everything's kind of looking okay, except for the fact of how off-centered my wheel is. Now, I've messed with everything. The chain tensioners really only pull it this way and this way, but the wheel itself is fully off-centered and it's actually rubbing this uh, frame bracket up there, if you can see that right there. So it's really bad. So what I'm about to do now is I'm going to have to add a spacer on this side to push the wheel over more this way, which means I'm going to have to shave down this spacer right here for this bracket since this thing's all one piece. The only thing I'm worried about is shaving it down too far, and that bolt up there that holds the bracket in is going to be rubbing on that rotor soon. So. Go ahead, I'm gonna pull this back off and I'm gonna have to figure out something for that and then I'll get back to it and we'll we'll get this wheel straightened out. All right, boys, two hours in probably now, messing with this thing to make sure it gets a little bit centered and we're almost there. It's like a little tiny bit off. As before, it was probably like more than half an inch off. I ended up changing this spacer out to a bigger one. I ended up shaving this bracket down a lot. I changed it a few times. Now we got the bracket pretty much flush and I bent it to match the swing arm up there and it locks up good, bro. It's bled. We got a working rear brake now. We got it mounted up here. We got it ran following the bar. Still gonna run a couple zip ties to hold it. But we got it uh, We got it in there, boys. The cable's a little short, so I had to mount it a little crazy. This is pretty much the only option I had to run it with. So we're looking, boys. So now this thing's uh, almost a complete rolling bike at this point. Still a few few little things we can do right now. And uh, one of them I already started on. I went straight in. Build this part out for the seat a little bit and I put rib nuts in it because the way I'm doing the seat, I'm not gonna be running that rear book rack, if you will. So I drilled out the seat a little bit more in the middle and I'm gonna add some spacers and I'm gonna be able to sit the seat flush onto the rear fender. That's how I'm going with it. I liked it better without the, the look of the rear rack on. Rear disc brake all hooked up on this side. Looking good, boys, we're getting there. Let's throw the grips on today. Maybe the throttle just to see the bars a little bit more complete. Not gonna mess with any of the wiring or anything until we put the motor in. So uh, as far as the actual moped itself goes, minus the motor, dude, she's almost done. All right, put the left grip on, got the brake hole mounted where I want it. But here we got our pedal delete, which is pretty much just this flat bar for our feet to rest on. So that just slides through here. It's got a couple C-clips. I just wanna put it on now because I'm thinking I'm about to cut it because I don't like how wide it looks um, or feels. But now I got the seat on there, I can kind of see how it's really gonna feel, so. Seats mounted, like I said, we have a couple spaces back there holding it up. 
but it's all mounted in. Everything's looking a-okay in here, but let's get a look at what we're doing here, boys. Oh yeah, we're cutting that, boys. That's going to conclude it for the Pook Maxi on this week's episode. We will come back next time where we finish up the motor and I actually just got a final few pieces. You're not allowed to see that yet. A final few pieces for the motor build. We're still waiting on the new custom exhaust to show up for it, but we got a lot of things coming for this and I can't wait for you guys to see the pipe that we did order and a few other things. Throwing the motor in, starting this thing up, and of course getting the first ride in and the real first test on this Pook. I haven't rode it since I got it, even with the stock engine. We went full build instantly. We never really got to ride this. We don't even know if we like this thing. We're going to find out here shortly. That's going to do it for this one. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you guys check the link in the description down below and check out the website. You can grab a sticker, grab a shirt, anything. Show some love to the channel. Show some support so we can keep making these videos. That's going to do it for this one, boys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.